Oh, <laughs> Apple Pro Raw. You asked for it, I did it, and it's pretty bloody good. It's somewhere between what iPhone is doing right now with, say, night mode and shooting the starry skies, and where, say, the Samsungs and the Pixels are, somewhere up here. It's somewhere here. It's not quite there, but it's so much better than what's over here. Let's have a look at it. G'day guys, Shane Mostyn here. I do two videos each and every week all about small sense of photography. I'm talking about mobile phones, action cameras, GoPros, and drones. So if you're into that sort of thing, it's worth subscribing to this channel. Hit the bell so you see when I release a video each and every week, twice a week. What we're doing today is we're talking about this new Pro Raw functionality that's coming in the next software update to the iPhone 12 Pro series. That's right, the Pro series on the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. That's it just those two phones. But it's pretty bloody cool what this Pro Raw can do. So what is Pro Raw? It's not a real genuine raw file, although it exports it as a raw file, but it's not genuine as that. Let me explain why. With computational photography, which is what exists on all the phones that we have these days that shoot high dynamic range sort of photos, and long exposure photos. It's all about computational photography. It's the computer that's in that device doing the best that it can to output the best image that it thinks is possible. So for example, with the Pixel, when you're shooting astrophotography, it takes a heap of photos, stacks them all together, mashes it all up so it's got one file, and it looks pretty bloody good. It does a really good job with the computational photography. With the iPhone, computational photography results in things like deep fusion photography smart HDR, night mode photography, and the portrait photography, the portrait mode that we have on this phone. With the DNG file, or with the shooting Pro Raw, the DNG stands for digital negative. So remember when you used to get your photos printed way back in the day, you take a photo, pull the film out, drop it off for processing, they'd print them, you'd get the photos back in an envelope, and you'd also get these negatives. And then with those negatives, you could go and get them reprinted, they could edit them and develop them slightly different, you get different looking photos. So those negatives was what you could reproduce the image with, with your own touch if you like. DNG file is exactly the same, it stands for digital negative. It lets you edit the photo the way you want to edit it. Now this is not available to everybody yet. Everybody that's asked me to do this video in previous videos like this one, you asked me, do it with the Pro Raw version because it will be so much better. And you're right, it's so much better. What I'll tell you though, it's not for everybody just yet. You've, if you're not part of the Apple development team, if you're not part of that program, you need to just basically wait until the next software version comes out. And this will be on the next software version. What do you need to know about raw formatting? Well, there's a few things. One, it generally gives you a lot more control over on how that final image is edited. Second thing is that you can, with a phone, with this phone, is that you can do a lot more noise reduction in that photo. It's really good for getting rid of the noise in the final image. So anybody who's watched this channel before and you've seen those really horrid artifacts that Apple throw into the sky with those night photos, it's gone, all but gone. It's really close to being gone. It's so much better in this format. The second thing that it does is it gives you massive control over the dynamic range in the edit. And I've got some really good examples to show you in a minute when I throw them on the computer. So what do you need to know about this Pro Raw feature? One, it's not available yet, it's in the next software update. Two, it's going to give you the option to shoot RAW or shoot your JPEG HEIC format like you normally do right now. And it's literally the touch of a button to turn it off and turn it on. Simple as that. Three, when you shoot RAW on the iPhone, the file is heaps larger than the JPEG file. So a regular JPEG file might be about 1.3 meg up to say 3 meg. A RAW file is going to put you in the ballpark of 25 to 30 meg. So they're substantially larger. There's a lot more information on there. The information comes directly off the sensor. In the case of the iPhone, it does a little bit of computational stuff and then gives you this massive file that you can do with whatever you want. You can be 
the computer that decides on what it's going to do. Four, it's going to create, if you haven't shot RAW before, and this is not new to iPhones, you've been able to shoot RAW with different apps like uh, Halid, 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 whatever it is, Moment. There's a number of apps that shoot RAW files as well. And they have all failed, in my opinion, major, because they shut down at one second. You can't go past one second shutter duration. And we all know that when we're shooting the stars, you want like 20 to 30 seconds. So those apps are fantastic for daytime sort of photography and slightly low light photography, but for shooting the stars, they just don't do it. You need longer shutter duration to capture those stars. And with Pro Raw and Night Mode, it's a match made in heaven. It's really good, it works really well. The last thing you need to be mindful of is that it just doesn't work in portrait mode. Portrait mode and RAW just don't work together. That's a massive computational photography thing that iPhone does, that all the phones do. So when you're shooting RAW with uh, portrait mode, well, it just doesn't work. It doesn't let you do it. So that what we'll do now is we'll have a look at some of these photos. And I've been out the last couple of nights taking photos of the night sky. We've had a lot of moonlight, so bear that in mind. But I've got some photos here that's really gonna demonstrate just how good the dynamic range is and the noise reduction is with Pro Raw. Let's have a look at them. So what we're gonna do now, I've loaded on a series of photos, we'll go through them really quickly, and I'll show you the differences without any edits at all. We'll show you some photos here that is really going to demonstrate the noise reduction and the recovery of shadows that you can get with the DNG file. Basically all these things are going to make your nighttime photography, your astrophotography, so much better. All right, let's have a look at this. So this is a sunset photo, it's a HEIC format. So all the computational photography that iPhone does is in this photo. So there's the HEIC and there's the DNG. Already you can see between those two, the HEIC file is substantially brighter. It's overexposed, if you like, compared to the DNG. What I'll do with this, I will go up and I'll increase the shadows. Well, let's just hit the auto button on that one, for example. And we'll zoom in here onto that telegraph pole. We'll zoom in here and you can see there the noise on that is just bloody horrible. We'll reset that. We'll increase the exposure and then bring up the shadows. We'll just, so there's only two things that I've touched there. Bring up the shadows and you can see all that noise that's in all the shadows. It's really quite bad. Here is the DNG file of the same photo. And if I hit the auto on this, it doesn't really know what to do because it's the digital negative, it's the raw file. You need to edit this. So we'll go in, we'll reset that first. <clears throat> and I'm going to increase the exposure and boost up the shadows. And let's have a look at that. Now that, with the shadows increased 100% on that photo, versus this one where the shadows are increased only 68 points. Look at the noise in those recovered shadows versus the noise in these recovered shadows. It's virtually non-existent in comparison. Let's move on. We'll have a look at another photo here. This is a HEIC format photo. This is a 30 second photo in night mode, just like we've done on every other sort of photo that we've taken. We'll zoom in right up close to this. And you can see there, all those artifacts are there. It's not that good, don't like it. Well, it's good for a phone, but it's not great. Here's the DNG file of exactly the same photo. All I've done is turn raw on, like I showed you before, and took another photo. Look up in the stars here, and you can see that digital noise. I can recover that noise and fix it, just like that, whereas, the HEIC file, we can do the same thing there, recover that noise, and those artifacts are still all over the place. So that doesn't work as well. In fact, my only regret in doing this photo last night is that I didn't take the Google Pixel out there to do the same sort of photo, because I think that looks pretty close to what the Pixel would do in the same environment. So make sure you sub to the channel because I will do this comparison with the RAW uh, the Pro Raw and the Pixel 4a in astrophotography mode, and we'll see what sort of results we get. All right, so now we'll go on to this HEIC format of some clouds in amongst the sky. If we look at these two here, 
Uh, this is the HEIC file. You can see the stars in the sky. There's some artifacts around there. Yeah, it's not too bad. Here is the same photo with a DNG file and you can see that there, no editing has been done in this if you like with the phone. Um, you can see there the Southern Cross that I pointed out before in the other video. Where'd you go? There it is. Got two there and there's the two pointers. Um, so what we'll do, you can see those artifacts in there. I can, yeah, we can get rid of that, but it's going to get rid of a lot of those stars. If we go and have a look at this photo here, there's not as much noise. In fact, that's all I'd move the slider down to 27. That's a major difference. That's a big bonus between the HEIC format and the Pro Raw format. Less noise reduction is required to get rid of that stuff. What these series of photos are is of this morning, and it's actually my coffee cup from like 4.30 or something in the morning, I think it was. What time we got there? Five o'clock in the morning. So the dawn is just upon us, but there's still plenty of stars in the sky. So this one here is the DNG format. And what I've done with these is I've used all three lenses on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So this is your regular lens. This is your two and a half time zoom lens. There's a HEIC format. There's a DNG format. You'll notice here they're all darker. And this is the ultra wide lens with the DNG and the ultra wide lens with the HEIC. I'll quickly edit up uh, which one. Let's go with this one here. This is bound to show the noise. If we zoom into that, you can see there's a lot of that artifacts around that coffee cup. I'm not in danger, I am the, I'm a bit of a uh, Breaking Bad fan, so that's what that cup is. What I'll do, I'll go up here and hit the auto button, and we'll see what we get. It's a, it's a bit blurry, the artifacts are certainly there. Um, we'll increase the highlights a bit. I'm curious as to what the noise reduction is going to do on this. It's okay, it's not too bad. Keeping in mind, it's still pretty dark. It's just the moon that's out and the sun's slowly coming up on the side there. This photo here, as it looks right there, is what the naked eye could see. So it was still pretty dark. I'm going to see what we can recover out of the front of that cup there. And we'll see what we can bring in as far as details go. We'll increase the clarity a little bit and increase the dehazing a little bit. And I'm going to go down there and increase the noise reduction luminance. That's actually pretty good. That's recovered really well. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with these when I've got no moon. So make sure you sub to the channel in the next couple of weeks. Well, I'm going on a bit of a road trip. You can see where I'm going, but um, I'm definitely going to go get some lower light stuff with this Pro Raw. I think it's going to make quite the big difference with the astrophotography. So if you're on the cusp of saying, well, I'm about to leave the iPhone camp and go and use something with the Android because they do better low light stuff. Well, I can't argue with that. They definitely do better stuff, but this is clawing its way back. I think this Pro Raw is quite impressive. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you next week. Catch you later.